second. Uh, oh, a second. So you have it now, right? Yeah, make get control. I think you have. I don't didn't mean to do the broadcast starting. Can can you try changing the uh, slide? You have to what? Can you change the slide? Oh, there you go. Let's see here. Well, how do you how do you advance it on here? Try it again. How do you how do you advance the slide from here? I don't uh, get it. Press on the uh, slide or right or left or spacebar. I can see here. There you go. Press. There you go. That's you. Perfect. Okay. It's slow. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I'll just let them know the connection is kind of sucky. Okay. So, all right. You want to so. I'll guess uh, I'll just change presenter there. Give it back to you. No, you're fine. You have control either way, so you're good. All right. Okay. Um, you should be all right. Can you only see the presentation slides, right? Nothing on the other screen. I can like, see the presentation slides. And I can see your mug. That's it. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Can you see me? Okay. I can't even see where I'm at here. I do not see you. I don't think your webcam is on. Okay, so now it is. All right, there we go. There it is. Okay, perfect. How are you still waiting to start? Did you get these guys uh, lunch things? Yeah, they should be receiving them here. Uh, they're, they're 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 being sent right now by Nathan. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. This is my. Uh, if you change, I don't know if you change the background on this thing or not. Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. Looks like Tyler has joined. Hey Tyler, how's it going? I'm not... I, th I think they're in the hold mode till you start to broadcast, I think. I think we're already broadcasting at this point. Okay. Hey, Scott. I wonder if you guys can hear us. No, I don't, Tyler. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like it mutes everybody right at the beginning. Once you go ahead and start, Ali at least turned it on. So, what's that? You want to go and start to broadcast or no? It's broadcasting already. Oh, it is? Okay. Yeah. Scott and Tyler, can you hear us? Yep, I can hear you guys. Oh, perfect. Good. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>
I spent enough time in my life talking to myself, you know? <laughs> well, it, it never seems to fail now with however many conference calls everyone has to do that there's always one person who just starts talking and forgets to unmute one of the eight different mute buttons. Right. Yeah. It's tough. Well, hopefully, you know, as time goes on, we'll be able to get back to normal. Let's hope so. Seriously, hopefully soon. Yeah. What you got there, Rick? <laughs> it's a Diet Coke, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Todd, did you get your uh, Grubhub? Uh, I just saw the email come across, yeah. Perfect. Nice. Scott, did you get yours? i take that as a maybe. Oh, well, I'll get you one later, Scott, no problem. Um, after this presentation, no problem. No worries. Oh, you made chicken wings, all right. <laughs> hey, Vaughn. Hey, John. We got about, I don't know, 13 people, so we'll give it like another minute or so. Um, sure. People start trickling in. Uh, Mr. Jeff Burke is in as well. Oops. Sorry, were you trying to say something, Jeff? No, just testing audio. Can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. Cool. Hey there. Yeah, how are you? Not bad. How are you? Good. Good. It's you know another lovely day in Seattle. I'm sure it's the same way in Portland. Yep. I imagine. Raining yeah. outside right now. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's no idea. Idea. I've been outside. We should stay back. We had a saying back in Indiana, we grew up on a farm in Indiana, it was like, it's a bit, it's just a toad strangler. It's coming down so hard. <laughs> <laughs> I've not heard that one before, I like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Looks like we got more coming in. I'll give like another minute or so. <clears throat> Jeff, do you still have the beard? I still have the attempt at a beard, yes. <laughs> I was hoping to see it through the webcam. I'm sure everybody else would have wanted to as well. Yeah. So, some of us are blessed it. with that, some are not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm in the latter category. <laughs> yeah. I can use a girl goatee, but but I have a hard time getting on a plane when I do that. Seems yeah. like. <laughs> Uh, trying to grow out my hair, but it's not working out very well right now. Let's see what happens. I gotta say, I think it's the longest, longest I've seen the hair. 
Yeah. Yeah, I can't think I tried I tried growing it out while I was at interface, but I think I'm using quarantine as an excuse at this point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. It's uh I'm just gonna be the last attempt for sure. Okay, guys. Um Let's get started. Well, and other uh, people will just trickle in as we go. I know everybody's busy. So thank you all for attending the another virtual lunch and learn. Um, so there's been a slight change in topic today. Um, instead of just looking at variable water flow systems, we'll actually be uh, including smart chillers in the presentation to show the different chiller options that ACI has to offer. So the presentation is going to be about an hour long. Uh, feel free to ask questions at any time, um, and we'll leave some extra time at the end for any Q and A. Um, you can use either raise your hand, um, and I'll unmute you, um, or you can use the chat box, whichever you guys prefer. Um, and uh, during the presentation, I'll mute everybody um, just so we don't have any background noise and whatnot. So uh, everybody knows me, um, I'm Ali. If uh, I haven't met you before, I'm the lead applications engineer at uh, ACI at the Portland office. Um, today, we are lucky to have uh, Rick Snar. He's a VP of Applied Products um, at ACI. Um, before that, he was a vice president at uh, JCI. And before that, he uh, was at Carrier and trained as a regional manager. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if any of you have met, met him or worked with him before. Um, he's been all over the place and he has a lot of uh, great connections. So, and he's leading the pack introducing the new applied uh, equipment we have uh, we've acquired in the last few months. So before we're handing off the presentation to Rick, uh, I just want to briefly show everybody the new Ply products since we're only going to be focusing on smart and uh, variable flow um, from Comfortflex. Um, so this is the full uh, line card that we have. It's a little chaotic. So we pulled out the new applied uh, products that we have, uh, Comfortflex and smart. Um, um, so Rick's going to touch base on that uh, right after this. We also acquired Miller Picking um, which is our custom, semi-custom um, air handler units, a tent master, um, which is uh, more of a package units, air, rooftop units. Remza is our, our fiberglass uh, cooling towers. Um, Versailles is our controls. Um, some of you are familiar with Cambridge, uh, which is our more of our robust direct and direct uh, gas-fired units. Um, our intent is to provide like lunch and learns for um, all of these uh, different equipment, these new applied products um, as the months go by. So right now we're starting with Comfortflex and Smart. So without further ado, uh, I'll give it to Mr. Rick. Well, thank you, Ali. Well, well good afternoon, I guess it is. It's both the same time here as in Seattle and Portland. So as uh, Ali mentioned, I joined um, ACI about, you know, about almost three months ago now. And um, to help them expand their portfolio of products, um, you've pretty much known us for, I think, for as an air distribution company primarily and you know our new focus is really to, to expand our ability to, to better serve you uh, as a consulting engineer and and, to, and also to provide solutions to to those jobs that that uh, you guys are working on and hopefully we, we can partner with you on, on on some projects not only on the chiller side but you know also including a lot of the air side products that we have and and uh, from a true systems approach right um, so Ali mentioned I uh, I work for I actually work for train and carrier both in a in a in a regional sales executive role, and then most recently I was a vice president of sales for Johnson Controls in uh, out of Milwaukee. So I've lived in Seattle about the last six or seven years, and um, you know I've uh, I've enjoyed it up here and, and been in Portland several times. So I, I enjoy that city down there as well. So I really appreciate you guys though getting on this afternoon. So so let's if we can, uh, we'll just go ahead and get started. I'm sure most of you have heard of Smart before. I mean, they're they're the they're the largest. Whoops, excuse me. There, can I still see my screen? Yep. I hit I hit enter and it just went right to blank. <laughs> That's not good. So, um, sorry. Technical difficulties never never happens. You know, I remember a guy telling me never never perform on stage with dogs or children, right? Or or to go live on a webinar. So, it's about the same deal. I'm gonna try this again. Nope, didn't let me do it. So um, I apologize, guys. We we actually practiced this earlier. So Ali, oh, here we go. Did you advance that, Ali? I did. So you want to use your mouse to click it. 
to go to that. I don't screen. have a mouse on my laptop, so oh, wait, oh, I got it. That one, got it. okay. So, so anyway, so let's just I can't restart here if I may. So, Smart has been around um, since the mid '80s, early '90s. They are the largest global manufacturer of oil-free technology, as far as compressors are concerned. And you know, they're they're um, uh, based out of out of Canada originally. They have offices throughout the U.S. as well as service support, including including their their abilities to help doing startup, and and also help contractor with with, uh, with any service related issues that may arise. Again, you know they're air cooled and water cooled from 60 ton up to 3,200 ton um, water cooled machines. They're actually uh, installed at a district cooling plant in Dallas. Uh, several of those machines are in service now. So if you look at, at uh, the, the modular arrangement, you know, the modular chiller has, that term has a lot of different meanings, right? So if you look at a compact modular, you look at one to the left there, that's multiple small tonnage machines, you know, in a, in a parallel type of arrangement um, for an application where you may have a certain tonnage now and you want to add additional tonnage as, as, as the building gets built out or as they add additional square footage. Uh, also for retrofit applications where you've got a large machine, you've had to cut it up, let's say to get it out of the mechanical room. Now these machines go in in, in pieces, uh, a much smaller platform and, and to add tonnage as well. The more the more traditional uh, arrangement is a narrow narrow configuration. You see the one to the, to the next to the right. And then as a lar as the tonnage goes increases, uh, those barrels then get assembled a side to side, a more traditional centrifugal chiller approach. Again, SMART is a, is a centrifugal grade chiller um, the difference is it uses oil-free technology, but also in addition to that, if you look at any centrifugal chiller, its capacity is based on the, is the speed of the impeller, the circumference of the impeller, and the tangential force it can put on the outside of the volute, right? So by having multiple compressors, you get some redundancy. You also get the ability then to have, have a higher efficiency at part load, um, but they also then have, have an opportunity to look at how, how do I how can I do all those things and get high lift with a machine that's somewhat limited in circumference and we'll talk about that in just, in just a little bit okay so their traditional platform is vertical like you see here stacked on top of each other 60 to 1600 tons great application for for an area that has small footprint um, and also have the ability to add additional chillers in in, in the future. All up to 3,200 tons. This is the more traditional approach where you have the evaporator and condenser side by side, right? And, and then in this case, we have multiple compressors mounted on, on the top of the condenser. Um, and then the suction in, inlet obviously comes from the evaporator and then discharge straight in the condenser. How many, and I mean, and you can maybe just respond by raising your hand, but, it, but as we all know, as we get into large tonnage applications, you know, the ability to have cooling during the shoulder seasons um, creates an issue, if, especially on minimum load capabilities of the machine. Any high efficiency, high lift machine will have difficulties at low load and minimum load during shoulder seasons. Now in the past, you, you would traditionally add a shoulder, a, a pony chiller, if you will, or a side stream chiller um, to the existing chill water loop. In this case, Smart has actually taken that next step up and said, you know, we're actually put that small compressor and mount it on the existing chiller, so we now even have a, have a low load capability and not have to add a second machine or a small pony machine. It's actually a really, really good application. It's, it's a great approach, um, and efficiencies are obviously very good based on the tube surface for the same amount of tonnage in that compressor. So, I can tell you from, from my past working with several other vendors some will say you had a hard time keeping a job <laughs> right and i've worked with with carrier and and, and train and uh and york but you know one of the things that, that we used to as a competitor quite frankly would target was the inability for a, a danfoss compressor to have high lift well they have they have uh, taken care of that problem smart has by introducing a, a high lift machine which is really two impellers a first stage and second stage impeller so that allows the machine to, to look at both low, le low leaving water temperature on the, on the cooler side and a higher you know, condenser water entering on the condenser side. Anytime you get, the lift is really the difference between the, the liquid evaporative temperature on the, on the cooler and the condensing temperature on, on the condenser. Um, so 
you put on top of that low flow. Now you have low flow, low, low, low saturation temperature and higher condenser temperature. Now you really have a lift issue, right? And you have to have the ability to maintain that lift and, and operate over the whole entire portfolio, or I should say the platform and, and that compressor map. Well, they've done a really good job of, of combating that. And if, if you look at magnetic compressors, you know, the, the, the impeller and the shaft are actually levitated, right, by, mag, by magnetic, magnetic force. With one impeller, it would actually move that impeller uh, you know, back towards the other end of the bearings and would have, would have a little bit of an issue with, 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 uh, with performance. So now having two impellers opposed to each other, the load's balanced, and now you have the high lift, high differential pressure is no longer an issue. Uh, great approach, great technology, done a good job of meeting that need of, of high lift and low load capabilities. So I'll, I'll stop here. Any questions on, on that at all, guys? Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. So the other addition to this is when you look at when you look at multiple stage compressors, there's a couple of different ways you can handle capacity control and also every every chiller when you look at, at, at the capacity it's also boils down to dollars per ton as we all know right and it all about it really amounts to the the cost of pig iron if you just be quite quite frank the more the more machine the more tubes right the more expensive so anytime that you have to have to jump to a different frame size to get to get the capacity you need and that the price goes up substantially so you could with, with multiple compressors and it, it, ideally a two-stage compressor you can actually utilize something called an economizer, which actually allows the compression to be split between impellers. It increases the lift, increases efficiency, and increases the capacity. Uh, technology used on, on a lot of older machines that were low pressure um, and multi multi stage com compressors. So this actually uh, allows you to do the same thing on a positive pressure machine, medium pressure, positive pressure with multiple stages. So it's a great application and it uh, has great efficiency and a lot of redundancy. Also, the, the, the other portion of that is that uh, it helps with high lift is anytime that you have um, low energy condenser water in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a design leaving water temperature, you have to be concerned about the difference between entering condenser water and leaving chill water. Um, typically, that's about a 12 degree difference between entering and entering condenser water and leaving chill water. Um, Smart has solved that problem on, this, on these the new um, oilless bearing machines because actually we use a refrigerant pump to alleviate that problem. So now you can get as low as 50 to 55 degree air condenser water uh, with a 44 degree leaving water. Uh, a great advance in the technology and, and to utilize uh, lower air condenser water to increase efficiencies during, uh, during part load as well, okay? This is, so this is something unique I, I just learned from, from, uh, from SMART recently. You know, we talked about a modular approach. Well, this is actually, if you look at a footprint where you have, you know, you don't have a wide berth, so to speak. Let's say that the, the, the equipment room, mechanical room is fairly narrow compared to, you know, the, the width versus the length. If you have an application where you want to, want to put existing machines in and you can expand, expand the capacity, you can now do that with a machine that grows in length, not in width. So how does that, we can say, how does that happen? So if you notice the, on the diagram to the left, you'll see the machine there, compressor, obviously evaporator condenser. Um, if you notice it to the right, you'll see a split in the water box, which is right in between the two machines. And what you can actually do is add a, a, an extended water box on the evaporator and the condenser and not install the compressor till later. So you can actually add, it's almost like a, like a, a puzzle set. You can put the evaporator and condenser in, put the extended evaporator and condenser in now or wait till later and install both those to the existing machines that are there now. So now you have a linear type approach in modular versus or just straight through versus parallel. Uh, actually a pretty good, actually a pretty good application. So something none other manufacturers can do quite honestly based on their design. So not only water cool, but air cool. If you look at, if you look at smart from an air cool performance perspective, very low DB levels, uh, every machine comes a stainless steel base, base and a base rail. Um, and it, again, ECM type condenser fan motors as well, which one helps helps with uh, regulating and modulating the amount of, of head pressure. 
also provides a great, a great application for free cooling and heat recovery. In addition to that, you can also provide, we can provide integrated pump packages. So I have a single point connection. You have the chiller, the pump already installed as an assembly. Um, now you can also use, use, works very well on variable primary flow uh, in those applications. We use Armstrong pumps uh, with their system control uh, algorithms. So also dual pump design, single pump or dual pump um, for, uh, for redundancy and for, and for lead lag. Okay, so I'm going to stop here for any for any questions if we if we can. Any any questions at all, guys, folks? Sure, I'll ask I'll ask one, Jeff here. Um, Thanks. As Jeff. far as mounting those, do you typically see acoustic consultants requiring anything special for them, or are those typically on like <laughs> springs or? Yeah, I mean as far as far as the machine, I mean, the the chiller itself. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, what's 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 unique? I should say unique. What's what is what is a benefit to Smart is that it does have does have so low, uh, lower sound levels because of the design of the uh, oil free bearing. You know, if you look at it, look at a screw machine, we've all heard those things whine at part load, right? And 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 uh, sometimes the vibration is an issue. Well, uh, with Smart because of, because of the design of the compressor and, and using EC balanced uh, condenser fans. Uh, Really, the, the the need for additional vibration isolations isn't required because the compression is set on rubber mounts as well. So I hope that helps. All right, thank you. Yep, you bet. So you know, um, heat recovery is a is is also a big asset with air cool product. It's actually it's really a D superheater that we've added to the machine. Um, it's in series with the air cool condenser. So you can actually get, you know, a, a 10 to 15 degree temperature rise um, that allow for, you know, preheating a boiler, preheating hot water, those kind of things. Whenever the machine's running, you automatically get, you know, uh, the amount of heat rejected that would normally go straight to the condenser through DC, DC heater, uh, heat exchanger. Um, and again, that, that, that controllability of that comes within the machine along with all the valving, all the piping, um, and you, you see superheated refrigerant Again, up to 110 degrees leaving water um, and up to 300 tons of this heart, larger tonnage between three and 450 is not available uh, due to the capacity needed for the condenser itself, right? So, uh, uh, but then again, it's a shell and tube heat exchanger and it's not your, your standard braze plate that most manufacturers use for a, for a uh, uh, D superheater in those applications. Also, you know, if you look at look at the advanced corrosion capabilities, um, you know, we use a, a whole array of of uh, condenser protection, enhanced, um, you know, enhanced type of coatings. And again, still stainless steel base and, and electrical panels are standard. The um, uh, I don't know how much work you guys currently do, let's say on the coast, but um, you know, that's that's obviously a concern uh, for air cooled machines. This is this is quite unique. Um, I think some of us who've been around a while uh, remember a lot of manufacturers in the past of, of adding a vacuum cooling to their condensers, either in a packaged rooftop or other type products, um, to overcome you know to actually help with the amount of of the, of the uh, uh, condensing temperature. We can do that as standard on our air cooled machines by using a, a media. Essentially, it's a it's a it's a uh, you know, evaporative cool type media that has a pump, has a pump assembly, a sump, and the water runs over the media um, as the air passes through the media, then goes through the condenser coil, provides for for um, some additional efficiency and also the ability to get a little more, a little more capacity out of the machine at higher head pressures. Um, and so it's a it's a very it's a it's a very economical. Uh, way of providing a higher capacity at higher elevated temperatures as well, especially get into you know get into more dry arid areas like across like in in in, in other parts of Oregon and, and Washington State or desert areas, right? So how many how many of you have had, had experience have had applications where you you've been able to use free cooling or suggest free cooling in a in a, in a water cooled application? You guys used much of that in the past? 
Yeah, we I use that. Yeah. So, so did, did you primarily do free cooling through a a valved off heat exchanger with a plate frame heat exchanger to, to the cooling tower? Is that typically how you did it in the past? Uh, yes, we did that um, heat exchanger. We, we I've also done free cooling with air cooled chillers too, where we had an additional oh, sure. module. I, right. I guess I, I've done right. both. Yeah, and so so you know if you look at there's also an opportunity to use free cooling inherent to the machine, right? We're actually just, there's another set of valves where you use the, the natural heat transfer capabilities of the evaporator and the condenser. Um, like free cooling mode, you know, using a plate heat exchange in a cooling tower, you know, you can get about 30 or 40% of the total capacity based on that, right? If it's a 100 ton machine, you may be able to get 40 or 50 degrees of free cooling. Same happens for a free cooling mode. We're using a refrigerant cycle within the chiller itself. It's no added and no additional heat exchanges are required. Um, actually, actually, a pretty good option and uh, something that can be utilized where you know you have some low low load, uh, low shoulder cup of of uh, loads in the building during during the off season, right? Or where you don't have have the capacity requirements needed uh, during full load. But but to your, to, to to really to, to continue that conversation, you know, I think. Uh, Ali mentioned we, we do have REMSA. Uh, it's a fiberglass cooling tower. We have uh, Polaris heat exchangers, but also REMSA will actually will actually fabricate pipe uh, and put all the valving uh, on the cooling tower for a free cooling application where you're going to use chill water through plate frame heat exchangers. That's also another option for free cooling. So if you look, now you, I think you mentioned earlier that you, you use free cooling in, in, a, in an air cooled machine by adding an, an additional module, right? And so essentially you're running evaporator water, chill, chill water through a separate module within those air cooled modules, right? And let the condenser fan remove the heat essentially for any times below 50 or 55 degrees, right? Um, this is a little different technology. This actually uses uh, free cooling within the air cooled machine itself by adding a refrigerant pump. So, um, you know, it's a little different application, but it does work. Uh, the, the efficiency and the capacities are, are uh, comparable to free cooling with, with chill water uh, through, through heat exchanger. So something unique to, an air, to, a, smart, to a smart air cooled machine. So I wanna share with you if I can, you know, when we look at, when we look at air cooled or, or water cooled machines, you know, whenever we're doing a selection and, and for you, for you and, and looking for, uh, you know, solutions to a, to, a, to a design that you're working on, you know, a lot of it comes down to efficiency versus cost per ton, right? Um, and, and you know, our job is to make sure we get you the highest efficiency for the lowest cost per ton. I mean, that's just that's that's just how that's that's the, the main goal, right? For you and your customer. So in this case, this is actually a screenshot of looking at an NPLV standard, and along the bottom is the is the price per ton, and and the, the, the vertical axis is the actual KW per ton. So if you know, I don't know if you, can you guys see my uh, mouse on there? You can or not? Okay, good. So in this case, you know, ideally, you know, if 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 uh, if I want to make sure I get the most efficient machine, right? I'm really way over to the right here, but look at the cost per ton. Actually, the most most ideal machine would be 900 bucks a ton at about a 0 0.42 0 0.42 kW per ton. So, you know, if you look at that, you know, what, what fits the application the best? And this machine may be the, the, the most efficient and its cost per ton, you know, relatively high compared to others, um, but it also may not have the lift capabilities to meet the application. So anytime that we, we, we run a, a selection, we do something called a load line. And that load line really is looking at the leaving water temperature and the entering condenser water at constant because even though these machines may be really well suited for high efficiency, you know, high, high cost per ton, let's say, because of the, you're paying for a lot more, in this case, it's water-cooled, a lot more tubes, right? Um, but ideally, you may be, need to be somewhere around a 0.46 or 0.48 at 825 bucks a ton. And by the way, that machine will do all the way down to 30% capacity at, at, at 85 in, uh, 85 inner condenser water temperature with no condenser water relief. So it kind of goes down to how do we best select the right machine for you to meet your application? Is it a, is it a high lift, low load capability, or is it merely you know, a way to provide the customer the best cost per ton um, and the best efficiency? 
Okay, does that make sense? And, and, and we would gladly share this with you when we get into selections. When we're trying to resolve, resolve a, a, a project um, solution for you. This happens to be an air cooled, um, an, air, an air cooled approach, right? And again, the same, the same, uh, same approach we look at for either air cooled or water cooled. So one thing that 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 we offer is, um, is you know, as a, as a solution, solution provider with Smart, is looking at the total cost of ownership. I'm sure that that everyone here who's been doing designing systems doing work for owners look at total cost of ownership and look at life cycle costs you know and i think that that uh, that's really the, the the right solution for for a, for the owner who actually owns the building right and so if, if you look at that uh, we've actually come up with a, with a way to look at the total cost of ownership by looking at the general information for the for the for the selection for the chiller Let's take a, let's take a baseline chiller. Let's say that we're that we're looking to design for you know a smart um, oil-free machine versus a more traditional centrifugal um, that uses oil for for its compression and uh, and and look at the efficiencies and the pressure drops. All things that, re that relate to the machine's performance, right? Kilo per ton, full load capabilities, you know, part load capabilities, turn down, and uh, and then also the, the water pressure drop that goes through the barrels. Maintenance obviously is another thing to, to consume and to 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 make sure that you, you look at all those things combined. So we can actually look at a baseline, look at a smart chiller, because because I can tell you from uh, experience, you know, our machines are not the cheapest on the market, right? And uh, because of the technology, because of the efficiency. So when you're looking at, at total cost of ownership and looking at life cycle costs. That's when you can look at a long-term approach to a solution for for the, for the customer and your project, and we can we gladly would be able to help with you with this if if your customer is looking for true co total cost of ownership over over a 20-year or 30-year period, right? Any questions on that at all? I'm sure when you guys do energy energy type projects that this op this obviously is you know. Uh, one area that you're looking at, I'm sure, between pump power and maintenance and issue and first cost, right? So, essentially, the, res the results come out in a performa type report. It's actually an Excel spreadsheet that we can then go look at at uh, the chiller performance for smart versus a standard, uh, standard more traditional machine, um, and actually give you an idea of what the differences are. In overall cost for that machine over the next 20 to 30 years based on maintenance uh, of the smart machine versus overhaul and, and service requirements on a machine that has oil in it. Okay. Also based on the efficiencies. So that was that was that was smart, uh smart product line. And um I'll just stop here for a second and see if there's any questions. You know, again. You know, we, we represent the product for both Portland and Seattle, um, and uh, we're glad to help you with any any application you may have, and um, and and also come in and talk in more detail if you have a specific application. Ollie can help you with that, and I'm I'm glad to be available anytime. No yeah, questions? I yeah, I had a question about the. Um... It was a couple of slides back, but it was about the evaporatively cooled sort of panels that was added on to the the air cooled chiller on the condensers. Oh, yeah, 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 the yeah, the, uh, the, the uh, and evaporative cooled section. The, the evaporative yes. media, yeah. And how how does that work? Because is there a recirculation loop, or is that just all evaporative? Because there's a lot of water control that goes into a cooling tower. So is it just a is it fully evaporate so you don't have to treat that water or no it's um, it's it's, it? <laughs> it, it's very similar to a cooling tower right so the media in this case is is is, is the deck right the media deck um and so yeah i mean there's it's actually has a sump and, and a pump as well to recirculate that water across across that media so water treatment and cycle rates is also a concern uh when you're looking to looking to apply that product great question Yes. Okay. Thanks. It's like a mini cooling tower. If you think of it that way, right, with a pump assembly and a and a sump, 
and, and cycle right. rates yeah. and water treatment, pretty much the same. Yeah, exactly. Filtration is also can be added, which helps helps remedy some of that some of that um, you know concern with water treatment, separators and those kind of things, right? Which we can put in, in a pump in a on, on, on to an onboard pump package as well to uh, to help assist with that or custom. Absolutely. Okay. So if we, if you don't mind, we'll just jump into the other product here. Ollie, do you have anything to add? I'm, I don't want to uh, no, hijack the whole presentation. No, it's all good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, let me, if I can. So so ComfortFlex is a product that that um, uh, that we partner with here in the last. As I mentioned, I've been here about two and a half months, and they were one of the first products that that uh, that we brought on board as part of our line card. And uh, they were actually a, a manufacturer that I worked with when I was with Johnson Controls. Um, they're they're based in Mexico. The product was developed by by a, uh, the largest mechanical contractor in Mexico, um, and he did it really from a almost a need a necessity to have a, an ability for him to meet the solutions for his customer. Um, in retrofit and, ret and, and, uh, and replacement type uh, opportunities. As I mentioned, they're, they're located in Mexico. Um, you know, they, they, have two, they have two lines of equipment, actually three lines. It's, it's a water-cooled product and an air-cooled product. And uh, all the way from, from essentially from, from three ton up to 25 ton modules. And I think, you know, a comment was made earlier about free cooling. Uh, when you look at air cool, I mean, they're, obviously you're probably familiar with other products on the market. I mean, I I had sold multi stack for for years myself, and and uh, you know, and, and applied it both for free cooling and modular chiller approach, the air stack product. Um, great product, great performance, and um, you know, we we saw a need to have the opportunity to provide a modular approach in the small to medium ton tonnage ranges where you're going to either either have have want to add additional capacity down the road, it's air cool, or you have, you have a, a space requirement uh, limitation, if you will, on water cool. And so if you look at the air cool product, you know, they uh, both have centrifugal as well as actual fans. So if you look at the Clem centrifugal there, this one right here, what's really unique about that is if you had, if you had a situation where you had a high rise or semi high rise and you wanted to add, add, add uh, chill water to the application, and you don't have any, and maybe the need to have room on the roof for an air cooled chiller. Um, you can actually position this on each level, depending on the tonnage range. It has a centrifugal, a centrifugal blower wheel for the condenser for the condenser air, and actually be ducted into the into the into the chiller, and then straight out back out the chiller will do the centrifugal blower. Uh, can handle up to about an inch and a half static, so it's a great unique application in that respect. Um, and they've actually they've had a lot, they have a lot of those installations in in, in Mexico. Uh, we're the first, um, and please don't take that the wrong way, but we're the first rep for them in North America. Um, they're expanding their, 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 their opportunities throughout beyond Mexico, and they wanted to find somebody that they, they, could, they could partner with, and we, we felt this was a good opportunity for us and, and also a great product to provide solutions. So let's just go to each one of these if we can here. That, so here's, here's the Waterside product. Again, five through 12 and a half ton in modular, all the way up to 60, all the way up to 60 tons as far as total capacity is concerned. And then, then the water to water heat pump as well, up to 50 tons. And then you probably have, have seen something similar to this in the water cool product down below in 30 ton modules. Again, uh, you know, water cool with, with uh, swept type blaze, uh, brace plate heat exchangers, uh, also available in the heat pump or, or heat recovery. So all the all three of these products have heat recovery capabilities available up to 120 degree leaving uh, based on the application. So if you think about this, if you know we talked earlier about an application where you had a tonnage was let's say you had a 100 ton machine or 200 ton machine, right, and you needed 20 or 30 tons during the shoulder season, and the current machine that's installed really can't run that low because of, of you know the, the limitations to its capacity control or the design of the chiller. You can actually add one of these as a side stream chiller uh, for low load capabilities during the shoulder seasons and also provide hot water for heat recovery for places like hospitals, hotels, anything that sees, sees hot water year round 
uh, you know, for laundry and those kind of things, kitchen, uh, works out really well for that, from that application. There we go. Here's an example of, of uh, the modular approach with 30 ton modules, two fixed scroll compressors up to 300 ton. Um, again, also available either with, with, uh, with heat recovery or as a heat pump and also simultaneous heating and cooling. So uh, what's, what's unique about this application, this product, it actually, they will actually ship the, the, the product with valves already assembled on the condenser water and chill water side uh, for, variable, for variable water flow. Um, and also for variable primary flow on the chill water side as well to control the amount of, of water flow through each each module um, as the system pressure increases or decreases. And if you look at, if you look at the air cool product um, in 25 ton modules and and 30 ton modules, the 20 ton comes with two 10 ton independent circuits. 30 ton is two two 15 ton compressors. Again, you know, free cooling, heat pump, heat recovery, uh, pump module. So in this case, let's say you had a 75 ton application, you could actually have three 75, three 25 ton modules, and then additional pump package as another module. Then that's, and then you could actually have single point wiring to that pump package on it all, and then three 25 ton modules. Then if you want to add additional modules down down the road, all the way up, you know, up to 160 ton. Uh, you can do that by adding these these uh, 30 ton or 25 ton modules. Uh, a great way to to add to capacity when you have a minimum amount of capacity needed up front, and the owner wants to add additional cooling uh, at a later date, right? Works out really well for that. Any questions on this so far? Be anxious to see what you guys think of this from a from a product perspective, what you've seen you know so far. So we so so I guess it must be good good stuff. So we'll move on to the next one here. So I also wanted to show you kind of from a systems approach. Uh, you know, we've all had applications where you've had an existing chill water system and they wanted to add additional capacity or additional coil, fan coils or air handlers. Um, what's what's also unique about this product, if you notice on the on the, the, the top hydronic terminal units, both four-way cassette you know, one-way cassette um, and wall-mounted looks very similar to a VRF, you know, uh, fan coil or VRF, uh, you know, wall-mounted wall module. These are chill water, uh, single pipe chill water, and then, you know, combined with a hot water boiler, existing hot water boiler and a six-way valve, you can now get heating and cooling to locations where maybe you can't get ductwork, uh, or maybe it's a small application where it's a small MOB, where you know they have a they have a, a, a boiler and a, and a small air cooled chiller um, or something that approach you now have a solution um, from a total package perspective. And the reason I want to bring that up is if you look at you know we've all been talking about variable primary flow and the importance of variable speed. You know this product comes with variable speed compressors, Danfoss variable speed compressors, variable variable speed condenser fan motors right on the air cooled product. Um, obviously variable speed pump packages if, if needed for the pump with the, with the pump assembly. And then added to that then is like these variable coil, um, variable variable water flow and, and, and uh, variable speed, horizontal fan coils. Um, as a total package, you know, we use Corel as our, as our controllers. We can actually put a complete system together um, that'll give you variable speed everything. Those have been around for a while. The, the Hartman loop was a, was, a, was a big push some 20 years ago. About everything was variable speed. Chillers are variable speed, condensers are variable speed, condensed water pumps, chill water pumps, uh, variable speed on, on the on the air handlers, and then then you know low flow high delta T was the was a big solution to large uh, applied products and large applied applications. Now you can actually take that same same type type of approach design approach and bring it down to a 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 ton system, where now you have variable speed fan coils, variable speed compressors variable speed condenser fans and variable speed pumps uh, and use pressure independent valves in each one of those fan coils, now, now you have a real variable speed, variable water flow approach. Uh, great for small tonnage, you know, even larger jobs where, where uh, you have you, you want to do a, a little better, little better approach um, 
to or more you know a more systems approach to both to both uh, fan coils chillers and, and everything else combined so i think you know for me that this is a, an exciting product from that perspective and works out great for those small retrofit replacement um, opportunities where you know you you want to get a, a a more finite control of the system and and now you can use all insulated pecs right um where you would normally use maybe use a a different type of, of, uh, of piping. So, okay. So, any, any questions over this so far? Hopefully, you guys see, see some see some interest here in, in this product as well. Okay. Well, for the, the other important question: Everybody get their their. Uh, their Grubhub ticket. <laughs> yeah, you'd be right sure. I was just about to ask. Yeah, I was just about to ask it. Um, I saw a bunch of emails come through that a lot of them were sent, but usually it's an email that um, people have opened the email. So if you haven't received anything, um, let me know and we'll get that out to you. But otherwise, uh, if you guys have any questions, please shoot. Now's the time. But also, if you guys have questions, follow up questions, please email me as well. Yeah, you know, and I know this is a difficult media for all of us, right? It's yeah. different, and um, it's uh, you know, it's, it's it's sometimes difficult to be able to communicate. So, and we understand that totally. We're all getting used to it, I guess, right? So, but we appreciate you guys' time. Yeah. So, if you guys uh, don't have any questions, feel free to drop off. We can hang around here for a little bit, but we appreciate everybody's time. I know everybody's busy, and uh, it is election day as well. So yes, um, that is. So everybody got their votes out earlier instead of trying to stand in line. Yeah, I got a, I got a question. Um, just in, you know, I think the thing that we've been looking for is heat pumps, and you know, being able to run in heat mode, and that consistently. So has there any been any discussion about any of that products? as far as smart or um climate fat flex as far as heat pump operation yes so so the uh the water cool both comfort flex and and smart uh can run in heat pump mode absolutely um and so and, and comfort flex has a heat pump application or uh you know heat recovery right so with, with an added heat exchanger um that's on the water to water Product. Yeah, the, and so usually we're, you know, it's the air air side that is problematic. <laughs> that's exactly, you're exactly right. And, and multi-stack, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. And, and you know, it's funny, and if you notice, I, I'm like, I want to make specifically asked about water cooled, right? Because air cooled was uh, uh, an opportunity to say the least. And that's not just multi-stack. Everybody seems to have an issue or, or a concern about trying to resolve that, that, that problem, right? I mean, they, they just... Um, nobody's really gotten it right, you know, and to your point. And I think, you know, we, we can run in the heat pump mode uh, with, with comfort flex, but it only goes down to 32 degrees. Well, that doesn't help much, right? So um, this just doesn't, it's not a good application for it, quite honestly. So uh, that, that's a, you know, that's, that's a challenge. But thanks it's a known for challenge. <laughs> What's yeah, that? It's a, it's a known challenge. It's, it's true that, that <laughs> it is. you know, and, taking and uh, the, cold air and trying to go against uh, entropy and make hot water is that's that's problem, right? I mean, so it's yeah. and I and I think um, the the folks who finally figure it out, I mean, it'd be like the pet rock, right? They'll make a lot of money with it. So they're gonna finally get it figured out. But we would, but the vendors we represent. Uh, Smart specifically has been in development of, of an air-cooled um, heat pump, right? And 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 they're still working on it. So, um, you know, I, I uh, and I and I'm sure none of us would be serial number one, right? When they do yeah. come out with the product, right? The, you know, so the pioneers take the arrows, on right? a centrifugal heat pump, air-cooled heat pump. Yeah, yes. Yes. Jeez. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So I mean. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, I, you know, I've had several discussions with, with the guy who, uh, who's head of engineering there and, and um, it's in development, 
Now you know what that means. It's in development. I don't yeah. know if that, you know. Yeah. Okay. Is that a year, two years, or is that like somebody just put it on a bar napkin and that's what they're calling development, right? So um, don't know yet. But I appreciate you asking the question because that's that's a that's a hot topic, right? Especially in especially in Pacific Northwest, where it doesn't get that cold, right? I mean, um, if you got down to 10 degrees or or five degrees, right? Wouldn't you say that would be a big leap? Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. nine days, 21 ish. ish. Yeah, so you know, um, and and yet yet they're you know they're 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 not operational at 30 degrees. I've seen them, right? I mean, you've probably seen that too. At 30 degrees, they're not able to operate for one reason or another. Yeah, it's, it's a it's an opportunity to succeed, as they say. So. Well, again, if I can provide any any assistance, uh, or if you guys would like to see some you know some sample selections, uh, we can definitely help you with that, and and uh, love that opportunity to work with you and, and provide a solution and, and partner any way we can. Anybody else have any more questions before uh, we sign off? Doesn't seem like it. Thank you, Shem, for all the. Great questions, by the way. Yeah, th th thanks for everybody for for, for attending and and uh, participation, and uh, hope to see you guys at, in uh, you know uh, eyeball to eyeball sometime. Uh, yeah, hopefully soon. I'd like to make a visit back to the old interface office with the new kitchen. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> see you. All right, uh, let me know if you guys need anything. Um, you guys have all, should have my email. Um, and yeah, good luck and uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.